guys, Ken here, your thrifty apprentice. Happy Sunday to all. Welcome to another Art Journal Sunday video. We have not had one in so long, guys. So I'm really happy to be doing one on today. Um, if you are new to the channel or you have not experienced an Art Journal video before, here on my Art Journal video uh, Sundays, I use a water-soluble art journal in order to create it. Um, I go into it with no real general plan, maybe just an idea here or there. Um, I use whatever products I feel like using in order to create the project or the creation. And I'm going to leave the video real time, however long it takes. It takes. I'm not going to really um, try to, you know, rush the video. Of course, there will be some editing done to help out the time when it's uploaded to YouTube. So, I am going to be painting in one of my custom um, art journals that I just recently created. Now, um, I ran into or I purchased, should I say, Fabriana Studio, 140-pound um, cold press of watercolor paper. Um, it's a 25% cotton blend with cellulo cellulose. Um, paper uh, a little bit better step up from the budget grade papers that I have been binding the books with so uh, I decided I wanted to bind a book with that paper because I'm really enjoying it and that's what I did that's what we're going to be painting on we're going to be painting this journal so let's go ahead and get this get that crack open I'll take the seal off or the closure off should I say um, and just a real quick look this is just a journal that some journal that I made. That's what we're working in. So, anyway, um, I'm going to be doing the general idea is to do something really whimsical and fun and loose. So I'm going to be doing an ice cream cone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it seems a little crazy, but that's what I'm doing. I'm using um, my Gensei 10 by Paints, which I just wanted to break these out and use them because they're sort of inky. And I thought they would give me the sort of flow and workability that I wanted. Um, and I also grabbed my Karen Dosh uh, Water Soluble Neo Color 2 Watercolor Crayons. Um, those are more of a gouache product, so they'll help add body um, and opaqueness. And then I also think I may end up grabbing uh, my Jane Davenport Mermaid Markers at one point or another. Um, and these are just like a water-soluble ink field or dye-based um, product. So, that's what we're going to be using. Of course, if you decide to do this project, uh, I am going to upload the outline so that you can use it if you want to. If you decide to do this um, project, you are um, can use whatever paints and products that you want to. So let's just go ahead and get started. First things first, I want to transfer my cone into my book. I did draw it out on sketching paper first. Let's see, uh, I need to find a graphite pencil. Here we go. Let's flip that over. And we're gonna turn it into light tracing paper. I don't wanna use regular tracing paper because I have sort of a heavy hand. Um, and I don't want the lines that are transferred to be too dark. Now, here's another idea. You could actually, um, cover the back of your drawing or your outline with watercolor pencil. That, especially if it's the one that happens to smudge a lot, um, this might be a great technique for the dual watercolor pencils that we just recently reviewed. I should try that one day. Um, that way you can transfer watercolor lines onto the paper and they'll dissolve as you paint. Um, but we're going to use graphite in this project and we'll try to make sure that the lines stay light. We want to, won't apply a lot of pressure. And I'm just going to flip to a page in my journal. Um, now there, I got this thing here. It will lay, foot, lay flat and open there. Um, let's see. What page do I want to do? Let's kind of go in a little bit, right? Can we do that? Go in a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to take a clip here. And we'll just clip that down. 
I don't know if I'm going to be um, putting on, what am I trying to say, masking tape? I don't think I will. I'm just gonna grab a pen and this is gonna help darken the outline for when I upload it anyway. And I'll be careful if there's any extra graphite that I transfer because I'm applying pressure to the paper, I'll just erase that or I'll work it into the background as I have in so many cases. So we're just gonna make sure that they're straight. All right, and I'm gonna hold it down and I'm just gonna trace my line. And I'm hoping, try to keep my lines fluid and not chop them up. And this is just a good way to make sure that you um, don't have sketchy lines on your watercolor paper. And I may not actually hit my sketch right on, but I'll get the general idea of what I need. today i know i can't hear you answer but i still want you to know that i'm curious how's your sunday going i really hope you guys print out the outline or sketch out this composition and give this a try i think this is going to be really fun i have no idea how this is going to come out um but and there we go. We have a really light outline. I uh, don't know if you can see that. I will raise it up. So that's why I like using that technique because it gives you a really, really light outline um, that won't be too visible. So let's move on here. And I have a couple of brushes which are falling on the floor. Let me see if I can grab it. Okay. I have a couple of brushes here. I have a number two and a number six round, a half inch flat angle. What is this? A three fourth inch flat angle, a couple of water brushes, a number eight flat. So just a couple of brushes I'm gonna have on hand just in case I want to use them. So I'm just gonna set these up on my bucket here. I'm really, I mean, guys, I'm really like, honestly, going to take my time. So, I hope you guys have the time. I'm going to show you my bucket. Oh, it fell. This is my water bucket, and these are how my brushes that I'm going to be using sit up at the side of it. Yep. Um, I always suggest a bucket with two wheels in it. One for, you know, cleaning your brush, and the other for grabbing clean water. We're going to also grab some paper towels here for blotting and whatnot if we need to. All right, let's get started. I want to actually lift this and I'm going to put, because I'm not going to tape it down. Let's see. And if I happen to splash water on or color onto the other page, then so be it. I just want to protect the pages behind it. Um, I don't know if it's going to lift. You know what? I'm scared that paper may buckle. Let's throw another clip down here on the end. Just in case. They're going to sit up. So. Just a second. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna open my paints. Keep my little color key here. Um, I haven't used these paints in a minute, so I'll keep that little color key handy so I can see exactly what I'm using. Okay. 
these colors are in quite an order. Okay, I can see. I'll be able to read. All right. So let's see. Let's start off with the cone. Um, I really want a bigger brush. Well, no, I'll do that. You know what? I have a number eight. I'm gonna grab my number. Is that number eight? What size is this brush? This is number 10. I thought I had a number eight. I do. I'm gonna grab a number eight round. Um, and I'm gonna start off with yellow ochre, which if you have the Gensei 10 by stick, it is number 44. So we're gonna start off with that and I'm gonna get that. kind of watery all right um add a little bit more water then we'll go in here and paint the cone in I did kind of go outside the line there, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna try to stay loose with this. You guys know I'm a detail painter. Um, but I'm gonna try not to be so gung ho with this one. Let's see. Um, just a little splash in there. I'm gonna grab a little of the burnt sienna, which is number 46. And this one I'm not adding nearly as much water to. It's gonna bleed. We are just gonna start covering. I guess we'll say the light's coming in from here. So this will be our shadow side. We're just gonna start adding this shadow in. That's not nearly as dark as I really want it to be. Um, let's see, let's take some burnt sienna and mix it with, oh no, 64 is ultramarine blue, let's try some ultramarine, uh, just a little bit too dark, a little bit more burnt sienna in that. Bit more red to this side. And I'm just gonna let that bleed in however it wants to. Go ahead and add a little bit to this side too. End up being some under there. Like I said, I'm keeping this loose. It'll be a shadow here. Yeah. And I'm gonna go back in with a little bit more yellow ochre, a little less water. I'm just gonna just let it all bleed together and do its thing. A little bit more down here. All right, maybe a little bit of that burnt sienna on its own. Just flick it in the background on the bottom there. And I think I'm gonna wait, give that time to dry before we move in with, hmm, maybe I could stay away from it. I really don't want the colors from my cone to bleed into uh, my ice cream so I'm gonna wait on that I'm gonna get that time to dry um, but in YouTube land will be right now for you so we are dry that dry we can go ahead and do the um, ice cream now so I'm switching gears just a little bit and I'm going to be grabbing some Karen Dosh watercolor pencils now I told you guys in the beginning of this video that doing the art the um art journaling videos i am 
I am liable to grab any old thing, <clears throat> excuse me, in order to use. So now we need to figure out what color do we want our ice cream to be. I'm thinking I want it to be like a bright green. Green is my favorite color. Um, so I want to grab, now this is the Karen Dosh Super Color Soft Water Soluble Pencils. I'm going to grab the grass green. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, grass green, here we go. And I'm going to be using that to trace in the outline of my ice cream. Now, I'm hoping that this is going to be just enough color, actually, to give me the base layer. I can be kind of sketchy with this. It is watercolor pencil, so you can be sketchy. You can always crisp those lines up. And I'm not worried about the uh, dry color from the splattering that we did. Pretty sure it's gonna all work out just fine. In the end, let's see. And it's just gonna. Now I have no idea if that's enough color. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. <laughs> Scribble just a little color in there. Let's see what, we, what that gets us and then we'll build from there. So I am going to take, oh, let's see here. I need a synthetic, I need something that's kind of hard. Uh, let's see. Mm. I'm going to use a Zen All Media brush. I think, yeah, I'm going to use a Zen All Media. Uh, with this, I want to blot it on a paper towel. The brush wasn't clean, let's clean it. Now let's wet it and blot it on a paper towel. Go in here and we're just trying to liquefy the um, pigment on. And of course it's going to and then some pencil color out, some pigment out, should I say, as you go over those lines. Okay. Just gonna continue to just make sure that those lines are I have no idea how this is going to turn out, guys. So, yeah. We are just painting here. <clears throat> and, of course, you know that if you go into your painting with... I'm going to turn this around so I can get to it better. If you go into your painting with the pencils on wet paper, you can make more defined lines. Now be careful because those are gonna be much harder to remove, blend, or soften. <clears throat> uh, this Fabriani, Fabriano Studio paper has really been impressing me it stands up i'm kind of scrubbing a little hard on those lines there and it is doing okay now i haven't used those 
Ganze 10 by Paints in a minute. And I can't remember if they live. I think they do. So I wanna be careful around my cone. <clears throat> and I'm not really worried if I go outside the line or if I smear the line um, out of a whack. I just wanna make sure I keep some resemblance of it. So keep in mind, we were trying to quote unquote be loose. So I don't know if I want to stay with the watercolor pencil. Um, I'm waiting an area. We're going to put some paint in there. Now this is a synthetic brush, so it's not holding a lot of water. So hopefully this is just enough to add sheen. Spread any loose pigment that might been may have been left around. <clears throat> My sinuses are acting up. Okay, so now I am going to switch brushes and grab this number six around here, and I'm going to go. You know what? No, nope. I'm gonna go back for my number eight. I'm gonna keep it big. Let's get some sap green light number 51. Let's see what that's giving us. That's actually not bad. Let's water it down. Let's see. Let's go in here and see what we get. Okay, let's see what we get here. Put on a wash of that color. We're still able to see our watercolor pencil lines up under there. That is exactly what I wanted. So far, so good. Just get that wash on. It should dry down pretty even and flat because we have kept it pretty consistent. I like painting with this larger brush. Here we go. Let's slip it in there. And splatter some of that paper um let's grab some that was sap green light let's go with 53 sap green let's see and i'm not going to add any water to it we're going to use it straight from the pan um i don't like that puddling Here. We're just gonna start adding in a little darker color right away. Now you know what would be cute is if we use a credit card scraper to really scrape in the main lines of definition. Let's do that. We just experimenting, right? I want to soak some of that up. That's bothering me a little bit. Get some of that puddle up. Splash a little green. There we go. Uh, let's see if I can find a credit card scraper right quick. Let's see. Uh, here we go. Let's see here. Um, uh, 
this is really going to kind of test the, the paper, too. I really, 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 really wonder about this paper, baby. We're just going to look at that. That's nice. I'm putting my fingers in the paint. I'm trying not to. I want to try to keep the shape. Give me guys, I'm concentrating a little bit here. I want to stay in line now. Okay, let's see. Let's get this other side. Before the paper dries. Now that wasn't planned, but what's in there now? So now I'm gonna go back in with that wash. And we're gonna make sure we hit those. <clears throat> All right, guys, I'm sorry about that, but the battery to my phone died. So this is actually the next day. Um, I did go ahead and take a break from it at that point because I needed to let the phone charge. So I am ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I got my cup of coffee. Yep. And <clears throat> I've been having sinus issues the last couple of days, so forgive me if I have to clear my throat, guys. I did not want to have to do this uh, as a voiceover, but if my sinuses get too bad, I might have to. All right, so where do we leave off? I do believe that the camera cut off right after I was using the credit card scraper, so I'm actually going to go in here with some sap green. Just some regular set green, which is the number 53. Not sure which one of those are set green, so I'm just gonna. All right, and <clears throat> sort of saturated here. What I wanna do is put this in my shadow areas. That's actually not saturated enough. And I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna grab a little bit more paint, less water. There we go. I'm gonna put that there. And I'm going to rinse my brush, blot it. And I'm just gonna go in and blend it down till we blend it out. Just like so. <clears throat> All right, and I'll grab some more of this saturated sap straight from the pan. And let me see, need one right here. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna block my brush. And we'll go in and spread that. Didn't really get much there. Let's see if I can get a little in there. The stay now that area is wet, so it's not gonna perform quite like I want it to. We'll come back to that. Grab a little bit more of that sap green directly. Uh, let's see. And we'll go here. And I'm just gonna block. I'm sorry, rinse block. And then we'll go in and we'll blend it down. And the reason I'm blotting is to take any of the excess water off. But I do want the brush a little damp so I can blend. It's like so. And now uh, if this was the uh, Marie's, it would, I'd be able to blend those little uh, back runs in because the paint would reactivate. But Oh well. Okay, so let's see here. Let's 
that one. Let's get a little bit more color in it. There. I'm gonna block. And then I will blend it down so there's no harsh line there. I, to, I do tend to blend down to like the end of the section that this in because I still don't want to create any backgrounds or harsh lines. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see here. Grab a little bit more. And I'm going to turn my paper because well, this one is a little tricky because I want it thin here. Thin, 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 and then I want it to open up like that. Okay. And I'm going to wet, rinse, blot, and then blend. Just to get rid of those harsh lines. <clears throat> All right. Still working with that sap green, and I wanna shade that area in right there. I'm not gonna worry about blending it. And then with a little bit of more of that sap green, I can hear the frogginess in my voice. But we're gonna keep working. Too much water. All right. Guys, I didn't mean to get quiet on you. I'm just trying to. I'm dropping a little bit more color in those areas. Um, I'm actually going to leave it this time. I'm not going to blend it down. And I'm going to leave those darker, harsher shades. Shadows like that. Let's see. Let's do it like that. Let's make it curve out that way. Okay. All right, let me see. Just a little bit. I'm probably going to have to wait till that dries to darken it in the way I really want to. Oh, so far, so good, though. Um, <clears throat> let's work on the cone a little bit. I'm going to grab some yellow ochre here and I'm actually going to mix it with burnt sienna <clears throat> let's see yeah that's too wet um, let me mix it naturally so I'm going to grab yellow ochre Instead of using what's on my palette, I'm going to grab the yellow ochre out of the pan, mix it with a little burnt sienna. And I did not clean my brush. I went right into that burnt sienna. Okay. 
Okay. Now what I'm doing is starting to add some detail to the cone. Now what I just put on is going to be the shadow area. <clears throat> I'm going to blend it down, rinse my brush, blot it, and then I'm going to blend it down so I don't get any harsh lines. Same thing on the bottom. Just blend it down so I don't get any harsh lines. And you're gonna see what that's gonna be, uh, how that shadow is gonna play a part. Let's see. Anything else I wanna? There's some set rain on there. I mean, you guys don't have to splatter. It's just me. I don't have to do anything I do. I like it. I like the movement it adds to the picture. Um, okay, I'm going to switch brushes, grabbing the number two round, going in for finer detail. We're going to go into the burnt sienna, just straight burnt sienna. Mix it out on the petal a little bit here. I'm probably going to end up mixing a dark in there, definitely. And we just want to go right across where we had that shadow, right? And right across. Barely any pressure on the brush. I want to keep that line moderately thin. That's where the lip is. Alright. And then I'm just going to start the outline. This side, which is a little darker because of our shadow, right? Let's kind of fix in that cone, I'm making sure that it's even. <clears throat> I'm just gonna come in and we're just we're making this the shadow side because we have so much of that ice cream hanging over this side of the cone that it would naturally create a shadow, All right? At least that's what I think. And no, guys, I'm not going for realism. I do want you to know what it is, but I'm not going for realism. I'm definitely not. I want this to be fine. It's fine for me anyway. <laughs> I'm just giving in some more of that color. Let it work itself off my brush. Kind of dry brushing over, letting it let that paint work itself off my brush. Uh, okay, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Yes, indeed. There we go. Don't want that too harsh. I'm gonna grab water and go in and blend the end of it out. Don't want that harsh like that. We don't want it harsh. Blend right on over into the yellow ochre. Let's do the same thing on the bottom. If you move quick enough, you can catch it before it leaves any type of marking. All right, I like that, all right? Now I'm going to again grab my Bruxiana directly from the pan. I'm just gonna see if I can sharpen. Without making it any larger than what it already is. <clears throat> Which seems to be an issue for me. You know? I'm just outlining my cone here, just to give it a little bit more definition. I'm 
person I can say we're gonna add in a little bit more shading and shadowing after the fact of getting all of the cone detail on. So trying not to do too, too, too much. I'm probably gonna blend this down and then we're gonna move back to the ice cream. Hmm. Is that all I wanna do with the paints? I don't know guys, I'm kind of feeling like that might be all I wanna do with the paints. I think I'm gonna switch. But before I do that, let me see, let's grab, hmm. Number 50, uh, 53, that's the sap green. Let's, let's grab some sap. Just a little over here. And let's mix it with some ultramarine blue. Number 64. Mm-hmm. We'll get it just a little darker shade. All right. Go right in. On the line, on the crease. Yeah, there the icing. Okay. Let's see here. Come in on this one. And come in on this one. Which will then relate to this one. And here. All right. And, and then I need to come in here. right along the top of the cone, but technically we're painting the bottom of the ice cone. Yeah, so like that. Actually, I'm gonna take that whole curve, which I really shouldn't, or maybe I should, because maybe the top, that top one is going that one. Okay. Not too bad, not too shabby so far. Let's go ahead and add some detail into the cone. I think we may be, hmm. Mm, I need to let that be completely dry. So I'm gonna hit that with a hairdryer. Um, and then we'll come back and continue to work on it. Okay, I hit that with the dryer, we got it dry. I did notice that I don't really care for the way I did the top of that cone. It's not straight, but we're gonna go with the ice cream hanging over the side that is kind of obscuring it. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> um, so, cause I definitely don't want to attempt to scrub it out. Let's finish up this cone. So I want to put on the little Striations that go on it. You guys know what I'm talking about? The little markings that's on the cone. Now let's see, I'm gonna turn this sideways and hopefully I can pull this off. Let's see. Those lines aren't very crisp. I'm trying to keep them the same distance apart and keep my brush pressure the same so I can keep them about the same width as well. Just gonna go in for a little more paint here. But you guys didn't think you'd be getting this type of video today. Um, let me guys know what you think. What do you think about these full-length videos like this? Um, 
Some people don't care for them. I know that some people do. So, since this comb does not have a wrapper on it, right? So we are just going to make it a decorative comb. I love painting little crazy whimsical stuff like this. All right, there we go. And we're gonna sharpen up those lines and everything once we, okay, let's see. Now I need to go, I went that way. Is it this way? Should I be doing it like this? I don't know. I think I should be doing it like, they're supposed to cross each other. So let me start at the corner like that. I don't know. Now all of a sudden I can't remember how ice cream cone looks. That's crazy. All right, I think that's gonna work. Okay. Try to get those in as straight as possible side by side. I can't make any promises, but we are going to do the best we can in here. That one got away from me a little bit, got kind of wide. Kind of control my pressure better here so I can keep them thin. Can't run them all, that's what I was always told. You can sure try, that's what my mom used to say. Oh baby, you can't win them all, but you can sure try. All right, let's see here. We are almost done, a little tedious it was, but I think it's cute. It definitely adds to the look of the cone. All right, there we go. All right, we'll put that there. And then let's see, what else is on the cone? Oh, there's normally, yeah, guys, I'm not looking at any type of a reference photo. It's almost like cross hatching. I'm just starting at the bottom of that. I keep wanting to say icing. Ice cream. <laughs> it's not icing, Ken, it's ice cream. So it is raining here in Texas. It's actually storming. Um, it's been raining off and on all day. It's raining while I was at work. Um, and now it's actually thundering outside. So we are definitely in for some wet weather tonight. Those got a little thick. Okay. And we'll come down the other way. Get this like so all right there we have my little rendition of an ice cream cone <laughs> eh, i don't know that's okay it's cute um and that's probably all i'm gonna do to the ice cream cone other than this is a water soluble, so I'm probably going to use watercolor pencils to try to sharpen those lines up. Not exactly sure. I'm going to give this time to completely dry. Then I'm going to switch over to using some watercolor crayons, I believe. Okay, before I switch over to um, 
watercolor crayons. I did want to take some more of that um, light sap green, or sap green light, should I say, which is uh, the number 51 in this set. And I'm gonna make another glaze wash. It's gonna be a little bit more heavier pigment base than it originally was. And we're gonna go in here and we're gonna put another wash of color. I'm doing it for a couple of reasons. One, I want to enrich the base layer color. And two, I want to add a layer that'll help blend down the um any harshness or any harsh lines from where we put in our shadowing. Just base it in, just glaze. We just put on a glaze layer. Nothing too serious at all. Nothing too serious. It's definitely going to add um, a little bit more color and saturation to the painting. I think it's going to be definitely something needed. Let's come through here. It's going to give us more of an area for um, the white the crayon that I'm going to be using. Go. All right, now I'm going to let that dry and then I'll move on to the crayons. All right, so everything dried. Um, I'm not sure what else I want to do to it, honestly. Um, I know I want to add some watercolor crayon, like I told you guys. I definitely want to add some white. Um, because I know it's going to be opaque to my highlight areas. Um, and really just kind of work them in. This painting has probably been going on for about an hour for something that's so simple. Um, but I did tell you guys I was just going to play around. Let's see. I got a couple of color pencils too. I'm going to... Use that pencil to... I like there, I want it here, kind of frosty, sort of. Um, definitely want it here. Well, kind of got out there, went into my dark. And this is sort of like a gouache in a, uh, in a stick. Now, I don't necessarily have to blend them out. There's no rule that says that I want to blend at least the first layer out. And then maybe I blend something else on top of it. So, um, then right. On that lip, <clears throat> I think that's yeah, kind of what I want to do with that. Uh, hmm, let's blend it out. I'm gonna take a golden tack line. This is a number eight flat, and I'm just going to dip it in the water and then. Tap it on a paper towel because <clears throat> you don't need a lot of water for watercolor pencils at all. I'm going to go ahead and blend it out. I 
think I'm gonna definitely need more color once I finish blending this. These pencils are, I mean pencils, no. Um, these crayons are really opaque. I love them. Love them, love them, love them. I haven't tried many brands of watercolor uh, crayons. Uh, I have the this set of Karen Dosh, which is, um, what was it? A set of 12 that I ordered? A uh, set of 15, and then I ordered some open stock from Jerry's because I like them so much. Um, but as you guys know, I'm a more of an illustrator than a realistic painter, so the gouache mediums really kind of appeal to me. Just trying to just make that a little softer. I don't want that to be so harsh. I knew it would be opaque, but I don't want it to be harsh. Uh, I do believe I'm gonna go back in here with some color pencils as well. Of course, you guys probably knew that was coming if you know anything about me. Uh, just trying to blend that white back some. So it looks more natural, or as natural as it can look on this painting, considering who's doing it. All right. So, go over here and blend this in some. Actually, I'm gonna blend it all the way. I wonder if it'll let me carry that color a little. There we go. See if I can carry that color a little bit. It's kind of dry brushing. I don't want to put it. And I don't want to lift any of the paint I have on there up. So let me just leave that alone. Here I'm blending it down just a little. Just grabbing it and pulling it down and then blending it. I want to keep that highlight kind of sharp right there. Um, let's see. And then this last one here. <clears throat> it won't hurt for some of this to be speeded up. <laughs> it really won't. We'll carry that over as far as it'll go. Just dragging the color out. Trying to kind of blend it in. So it'll be frosty without being, again, so stark. All right. Uh, I think that's cool for those highlights like that. Okay. I like the way that that looks, guys. Okay, I'm going to put some more definition in there. I think I want to put, I know I said I was done with yellow, but I mean with the paint, but I'm going to grab the palette I had that yellow ochre on and go in here and water down some yellow ochre a lot. Um, kind of right there on the side of my brush and add it into some of that. Uh, do that again. Actually, I need to pick up a little bit more saturation. Yeah, there we go. And that 
dial and a little here just trying to add a little yellow color tint just a little into um just work that yellow ochre in a little bit give it a little bit more color you know make it a little bit more dimensional a little less one dimension two dimension add, add another layer of color in there and the yellow is going to blend in really really pretty with the green so and it's the yellow ochre so it shouldn't be too stark and we've already used the color um we've already used the color so it's not like we're introducing anything too new new kind of like that kind of like that all right let's see anything else i want to do to it i'm trying not to do too 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 much i'm going to outline let's see do i want to add some Oh, something is telling me can stop 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 uh okay i want to add some hmm i wonder oh. <laughs> i'm gonna scribble a little on that paper Grab a little off top of the crayon. Just here and there. Just here and there. Uh, add a little of that crayon with the tip of my brush again. Like so, I'm just adding in a little of that, um, what is this? This is, um, yellow green. So those, all those colors blend, blend together. Okay, I think I'm done. I'm gonna leave it alone. I need to outline it with some color pencils. And then I'm gonna be done. I'm, I'm gonna call it quits, guys. We've been, like I said, I've been at this for, I'm sure over an hour now. And if I decide to keep this completely, completely real time, you guys are probably tired of it. Um, so I'm gonna grab some color pencils. This is, uh, what color is this? Oh, reddish brown. These are Master's Touch Fine Art Studio uh, color pencils. This color is, yes, it's called Reddish Brown. Um, this is their artist grade color pencil corso at hobby lobby i want to sharpen up the edges of my cone that's one and i'm going to kind of use it as a corrective method now it's going to be adding to my composition so i'm gonna have to fill that in some type of way and i haven't quite decided how i'm gonna work that out uh, because you can see that space there in there actually but i needed to square the painting up all right that's okay that's what I love about this. Love, love, love. Okay, let's put that through there. Like that. And then we'll top that off. Just right on top like that. Let's see if we can roll that again 
Just a little bit, just a little bit. Just a little shading up under there. So much for loose, huh? Okay. Um, and then my green. This is grass green, I believe it is. And it's gonna give me some really nice dark shadow line without being too harsh. Definitely do not want to use black and or gray. Alright. Um, okay. I need to fix that that shadow wraps all the way around like that. And it would definitely be here. And it would wrap here. I'm really about to outline the whole thing. That's cute. And you know what? Why not? We will shade the back side since one, I need to kind of correct the fact that there's not straight. And it actually comes down like that. All right. You know what? Let me fix this little area here. Now, what am I going to do? I need to grab some yellow ochre. Not quite sure how we're going to fudge this. Drop that there. We're going to fudge it some way. Don't you worry yourself. And I'm going to grab a little Burnt Sienna. Now this is the color that's really right over here. Um, I know I'm really quiet right now, guys. I I had to get really intense. For a moment, um, I'm trying to remember exactly exactly what color that was I used. Um, I don't want that. I believe. Oh, I'm pretty sure it was a mixture of the burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. I'm more than sure it was. So y'all guys are getting to see a real quick fix. <laughs> uh, hopefully, it'll be a real quick fix. Um, let's see, 64 is ultramarine. That's a little bit darker. And let's get that here. Let's kind of work that in. Uh, I really want to get that uh, darker brown color. Okay, I need to let that dry. I'm going to dry this really quick. Okay, dry that. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can patch that up a little bit more. I think that's going to be the best it gets. Um, on me fixing it. 
I don't think it's too bad. I'm going to, uh, again, get that time to dry, and then I'm gonna drag those lines back down. I'm wondering if I should make them darker. I don't think I need to. Okay, you know what? That's it, I'm stopped, I'm done. Um, I don't think there's nothing else I can really do to it. I'm let's throw some highlights on it. See, of course I can't stop. I feel like there's more to do. Um, number 10, Jelly Roll, let's see. Number 10, Jelly Roll, number 10, Jelly Roll. It didn't wanna seem to leave me any sharp highlights here. I'm definitely trying to get it to. Let's see, I'm gonna clean this nail off. Maybe it was, it does get used pretty heavily. There we go. It's a little bit better of a flow. Ah. Maybe it's time for another jail pen. Cause I can't get this one to cooperate at all. so much better for me. I hope it's not dry. It's the only number 10 I have. Oh, guys, I'm so disappointed with that. I don't think I have a bag book. Let me see. Hold on guys, just bear with me. Oh, this one get put out. I'm not even sure why this in that cup. Okay. Guys, I think just gonna wrap it up. I do not have another gel pen on hand. And I really wanted to make those really highlights that I do on this. I think that would have made so much of a difference um, as far as the way my stuff normally turns out. Okay, number eight, here we go. You doing anything? Okay, number eight, doing a little something. You giving me? It's not giving me much though. Yeah, I'm pretty spent on this whole situation. Okay. I do like it though. Enough to turn it into ephemera. <laughs> I'm probably gonna uh, scan it in or run some copies of it off and turn it into journaling cards. Yep. Probably what's going on here. For art journal, it'd be really cute in an art journal. I mean, really 
right here. too bad not too bad at all not too bad at all all right i think i'm gonna call it done if you want to do more to it guys please feel free um, this session has gone on long enough. I just wanted to do something fun and cute in my art book. Um, something that could be used for, you know, I'm just gonna splatter my paper. Yep. I'm just mixing up the colors that I've been using. So some of them may be dirty when they get the paper. That's fine because they are bling. I just wanted something whimsical. And yeah, I'm gonna splatter that page too. It's not gonna be blank when I start on it. Don't know what it's gonna be. But we'll work on it some other time. Alright. <sighs> Pull the here. Pull that off. And pull that away. So there we have uh, I really wish my highlights with my gel pens were better, but that's what I got. I have to buy another set. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully you saw something in this video that you liked. Some type of thing that I did somewhere that you found helpful. Um, if you did, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Go ahead and share the video. Remember that sharing is caring. And maybe there's somebody else out there who would like to see this information. Uh, you can hit us up on all of the Thrifty Apprentice social media sites. That's Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And there's also the um, Thrifty Apprentice sponsor Facebook group, Paints, Pencils, Pastels, and Markers, which memberships is always open for anybody. Um, we're, because we do all things artsy and crafty, and if you are an art craft person, come on over and join us. Um, I'm trying to engage in it a lot more, but yeah, guys, come on. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and if that's it, remember as I tell you guys at the end of every single video, let me just make sure there's nothing else I want to do to this painting, because it never fails. After I turn off the camera, I'm like, man, I should have so and so. All right, and I signed that one much bigger than I normally do. Uh, so, yeah, as I always tell you guys, just keep painting and crafting. <laughs>